Fora TV. The world is thinking. Now, I want to end with a couple of notes about uh, going forward into the next, uh, whoever is the next president. I think that this focus on infrastructure should be an important priority. Leaders only have a limited amount of time uh, to really uh, move the policy agenda forward. They have to be clear on what their priorities are. I think uh, finding a mechanism for increasing infrastructure spending in the United States should be one of the priorities of the next administration. I absolutely think that is the case. I think it can be tied to our concerns about energy and our concerns about global warming. Uh, I think if we look at uh, study after study, a very compelling one to read and a simple one is McKinsey, you can see that we may be able to, to uh, address about half of our carbon emissions problems if we simply had a serious uh, energy efficiency campaign in the United States. Now that campaign does require things like congestion charging on prices. It does require things like serious retrofitting of existing buildings. These are major infrastructure related issues. But we can tie the need to cut our energy dependence, the need to, to uh, cut our carbon emissions to an infrastructure agenda. And I think the next president should do that. Uh, and finally, although it's not on, my, uh, on the agenda here, I do want to say that in terms of the priorities of the next administration, I would add infrastructure energy and over here I would add health care. And the reason I want to mention that is because I think health care reform addresses so many issues together for the U.S. economy. First of all, it is more than 15 percent of the U.S. economy at this point, and nobody thinks we have it right. So we have a large and growing part of the economy which is not behaving according to the efficiency standards we believe in America we can achieve. That by itself should be a reason for doing health care reform. Secondly, the government budget. Over the next 10 years, the deficit outlook does not look that bleak. And indeed, if we allow some of the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts to expire, it's really quite OK for the next 10 years. And then it just all falls apart. And it all falls apart, not because of Social Security, but because of health care. And health care all falls apart, not because Medicare is inefficient, but because the health care system is inefficient. So in order to deal with the long-term budget problem, you've got to deal with health care. Um, U.S. competitiveness. Well, we certainly know that the drag on U.S. producers from carrying that burden of health care, uh, particularly for retirees, has been very significant. Uh, the uh, U.S. support in the population for globalization is totally dissipated. Uh, basically, the U.S. has now turned into an anti-globalization economy. What can we do to change that attitude? I think the single most effective thing we can do is eliminate the insecurity workers feel when they lose a job because they lose health care. That's the single most pro-globalization thing the U.S. could do is health care reform. Uh, and finally, that hard-pressed middle class who can't save anything, a major reason they can't save anything is because their income is not going up nearly at the rate of their health care premiums and insurance. So.